Hi, my name is Greg Fisher. I'm a professor at the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University, and I'm sharing this paper on behalf of my co-authors Dong Liu from Georgia Tech and Gyoli Chen from INSEAD. The paper forthcoming in Academy of Management Annals is entitled CEO Attributes and Firm Performance, a Sequential Mediation Process Model. The paper is born out of an interest in how CEOs affect firm performance. In essence, what impact do individuals ultimately have on the organizations that they lead in terms of the outcomes that are produced? This question is puzzling and is often challenging because there is quite a large distance between CEOs and firm performance and it's often been explained through multiple different theoretical lenses in multiple different literatures. Prior research, as we broke it down, has in essence looked at it in three different ways. Firstly, connecting top management teams with firm outcomes, primarily through an upper echelon lens. Secondly, examining CEO attributes, individual attributes, and the choices or decisions that they make. And thirdly, how CEO attributes, the individual attributes of the people leading an organization, impact the teams that they lead, the TMT processes that go on inside an organization. Looking at these three separate literatures that have sort of co-evolved in parallel, we were able to construct this fairly simple model linking CEO attributes to firm performance. CEO attributes leading to TMT processes, leading to strategic choices, leading to firm outcomes. However, as we step back, we knew we, we, we were suspicious that that's not the full story and that there may be other things actually going on. And as we looked across the literature, we identified three additional elements that are worth considering and possibly integrating into that model. The first is CEO emotion and cognition. The fact that CEOs um, are emotive creatures and can respond to certain things in emotive ways and see the world in different ways based on their cognition. The fact that many times CEOs are held to account when they face their uh, novel, disruptive or critical events, things that happen outside of a firm that may actually impact the functioning of that firm. And thirdly, the fact that CEOs depend on organizational processes, things going on inside an organization to translate their choices ultimately into performance outcomes. And so as we begin to think about those three additional elements in the context of our original simple model, we, we, see where, we, we begin to see where they may line up and impact what's going on. Theorizing more systematically and more deliberately about where those might fit led us to build out the sequential mediation process model in which CEO attributes are related to their emotion and cognition, and that uh, relationship is impacted by the events that they face, and that emotion and cognition ultimately impacts their strategic choices, which is also impacted by the events that they face, and sometimes processes through TMT, proce uh, TMT uh, processes in order to ultimately impact organizational processes and firm outcomes. And so this slightly more complex but more complete model is what we build this paper around. Doing this whole process forced us to think a little bit more intricately and deeply about what else we could be doing to improve research in this regard. And one of the things we do is systematically look at what methodological improvements could be made when we're studying CEO attributes and firm performance. And we identify four different things that we believe are important for future research if we're going to uh, uh, have research with rigor and with insight that's needed to move forward. First, engaging with discrete events and recognizing that CEOs face these discrete events. Second, moving beyond surveys to understand CEO attributes and thinking about more novel ways of understanding and collecting data on, on attributes like linguistic analysis, social media profiling, or even sentiment analysis. Thirdly, using multi-level modeling to more intricately model what's going on at different levels of analysis. And fourth, looking at longitudinal case studies which capture both qualitative and quantitative data to understand dynamic processes um, within CEOs and uh, how they operate their firms. And so ultimately, we believe these four things will help us move forward. In the end, we hope that you will read our paper, that you will be inspired by the insights that we hope it generates, and that you will find value in deepening what we can try and understand about CEO attributes and firm performance. Thank you very much.